What's up, everyone? It's your boy NordRad89 here bringing you another rad movie review, the first one of 2024 for a new film, and we're going to talk about Destroy All Neighbors. This premiered on Shudder, and man, like I said, today we're going to talk about my positives, the very light amount of positives I have for this film. This was kind of a rough watch for me. And then the amount of negatives and the stuff, we'll kind of dive into that as well. And then I'm going to give you the rating and send you all home. So let's do this. Roll it. So Destroy All Neighbors is a new 2024 horror comedy film that is currently streaming on Shudder. It follows our main character, William, who is a struggling prog rock artist. And he's kind of trying to create his major concept album. You know, that one album that you want to make that's going to make a mark on this world. That's what he's trying to do. And then he finds himself in a series of nightmarish events, starting with the absolutely terrifying like neighbor that ends up moving next to him and stuff that's played by Alex Winter. So let's kind of get into some of the positives because there is a little bit of sprinkles of positives in this film. So let's discuss those. So to kick off our positives, I think it's fun that we have, you know, the likes of Alex Winter in here. We have Kieran Diol, Jonah Ray, and even Thomas Lennon in here. So the fact that we have like a really fun cast, even Kamel and Johnny shows up at one point. I like the cast. It's really fun to see all of them and it looks like they had fun. And another positive is that they committed to their roles. Like I think they all committed to the concept of this story and they believed in the film and like they're in the movie. And it seems like they had a lot of fun doing this movie and stuff, but it's just... I didn't have a lot of fun watching this movie, so let's kind of get into the mixed and negatives right now. It's like that was really the only positives I have for this movie. In terms of mixed and negatives, there's a laundry list. First of all, the top one is that this is so unfunny for me. And this is just a film that, like, I watched it by myself, so this might be a movie that might land better if you had a group of people hanging out with you. You guys were sipping on a couple beers, you know, had some edibles or were chilling out or something like that. But this is not like watching it alone. It was like dead silent. No laughs for me. Like you can hear a mouse fart in my room. That's how dead silent it was. And I was struggling to like not to, to want to turn this off. I was struggling to not like turn this off because this is just it was so cringy. The humor was just not funny. And another thing is the practical effects and the style and the way they handled this film. I just didn't really... I don't say I would, was confused. I was just like the comedy and the blend of horror and what they were trying to do. I was just like, it was it was batshit. It's, it's batshit crazy. Now, I'm going to tell you that right now. If you are into movies that have a wild concept and the humor is just totally off the wall kind of... But it's like that dry humor... You know what I mean? Like, even if you're not laughing, they're going to hammer the joke down more and more and more. You know what I mean? It's like that kind of comedy. So it, that that's a huge, some huge negatives with this film. And our main character, our lead actor, I like I said, he committed to the role and the concept. I just don't like his character. His character and is very unlikable. Just about every character in this movie is pretty much very unlikable. Another thing is just the whole like, you know, concept of the struggling artist and he's trying to make his huge concept album. Like I feel like the the adding of the musical element to this film didn't really add anything. Like I've seen other horror movies that use musical elements and add in musical stuff and it's a lot better, you know what I mean? Let's go all the way back to Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's way better, you know what I mean? Even Trick or, or Trick or Treat, the one from the back in the day, you know, not Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat, the one that deals with our, you know, rock star that gets summoned from his own record after he's died and stuff like that. So there's a lot of other horror films out there that use the whole musical background and element of music in it a lot better. And like the whole prog rock thing, like I just, it just, it doesn't hit home for me. It didn't hit home, like I said, and the fact that these characters are so unlikable, the dialogue is just so cringeworthy and so unfunny that this was, yes, this was a very, very rough watch for me. And like I said, probably one of the films recently that I could remember in my mind that I was like struggling to, you know, like as far back as I can go, Speak No Evil was way worse than this. That was, that was a movie that I actually like disdain. I disdain that movie. <laughs> That's a nice word. I've never really, I don't use that word a lot. But this movie was just a rough watch because I was severely bored. 
So that's probably another negative right there is that for me being bored, that's one criminal thing you can do as a movie is like when I get bored and it's very rare, a movie has to be severely bad because usually a movie that's so bad, it eventually hits this point where it becomes funny to me. But this film didn't do that. It just kind of stayed at that level where it was a flat plateau and it didn't reach that point for me. So like I said, like Thanks Killing is an example of a movie, like I said, with a talking possessed turkey that kills people, you know what I mean? And there's nudity all over the place and like all kinds of stuff. That film is like, it's, it's a so bad it approaches, it reaches funny territory. This film was just a flat plateau the performances, like I said, they put in a lot of effort and you can tell like they put in some work in this film, but I just was like not having it, was not feeling the vibe at all. So Destroy All Neighbors is currently streaming on Shudder. This one's directed by Josh Forbes. And like I said, this one just missed the landing for me, did not hit home at all for me. And in terms of a rad rating, for Destroy All Neighbors, this film's gonna land in at a 2.5 out of 10. This is a very, like, oof, very, a film that I would not recommend, like I said, unless you're into a very specific type of humor, you're into horror that focuses around musical elements, but that wasn't even my favorite part of the movie. Like you said, like I said, my favorite part of the movie was just the fact that there's all these cool, familiar faces within the film, but like I didn't find any of them that funny or anything. So yeah, 2.5 out of 10 is where this film's gonna sit and probably as this year takes place 2024 this is gonna be kind of like that benchmarker of like what's worse than this that'll be like my bottom five type territory stuff because this was this was my first 2024 watch but that's kind of good because it's this Hopefully we can go all up from here and that's the only thing we can do. So thanks for sticking around with me all for this rad movie review of Destroy All Neighbors. If you've seen this film, please let me know down in the comment section what you thought of it or if you haven't seen this film, did I sell you on it? Probably not, probably not because I was very negative on this movie or just hit me up down below so we can chat and say, hey, what's up, how you doing? That You could always do that because I'll be down to hit you up and we discuss and chat and everything be sure to like the video subscribe to the channel if you're new have that notification bell poke so you're notified anytime i post a video but most importantly you know what's up have a safe and happy day peace out